up from Capitol Hill is one of them. And a Congressman I'm Kurt sure. Schrader. Congressman, yes, thank you so much for coming on our show. I want to ask you right away, what is the Hold Congress Accountable Act? It would, it would cancel payment for members of Congress if there's another shutdown? I like the sound of this. Hey, you know, if you're not doing the work, you shouldn't get paid is our, uh, our whole idea behind it. A uh, little tough, as you know, the 27th Amendment doesn't allow you to regulate your own pay. Uh, we withhold our pay in our bill so we don't get paid till the end of Congress. And then, frankly, future Congresses, if there's a shutdown, people are out of work, you should be out of pay. And we cut the pay for everybody. Is there a lot of support for this? Uh, there's growing support. The Republicans are shopping a, a bill very similar to this. Yeah. We've got one that we're shopping. There's been a little other distraction right now. Yeah, right. More I mean, as time goes on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the real, the real deal is not about new bills. It's about sitting down and fixing the problem that's actually going on. And to that end, I mean, you are holding daily bipartisan meetings with your colleagues on the Hill to work yep. on different proposals. How is that going? Are you getting any closer? Yeah, I mean, we're making surprising pro uh, progress. Uh, if you were to listen to, no offense to the media, you'd realize, you'd think, hey, it's just Damn about the Damn media, it's, or, you know, it's wow. always our fault. We're the ones mucking up the whole thing. You're just getting bad information. You're uh -huh. getting bad information. We have to give you good information. I okay. will say good information for America is that the rank and file, Republicans and Democrats, are upset. They want to work together. There's a number of groups out there I've become aware of. Uh, one that I'm, two that I'm particularly involved in, that are trying to get past just the CR and the debt ceiling issue, the real issue, the real issue, the, 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 the cause of the problems we're facing right now is not dealing with a long-term debt and deficit in the economic we're facing right now. That's what the rank of problem to deal with. No, that is absolutely the real problem. I think a lot of Americans do realize that. How do you solve that problem? Because, I mean, frankly, that's a much bigger problem. And, I, and that is why we're at this impasse, because we do have an enormous spending and entitlement problem in this country, and, we, and we've got to solve it. Are you getting close to solving that one? Well, we're working on it. We also have a lack of revenue issue. The baby boomers hit in the system were not anticipated, not in the development of the entitlement programs, nor in how to pay no. for them. So it's time for us to get together, throw away all the partisan rhetoric, mm -hmm. sit down and work through mandatory, discretionary and revenue situations. We need tax reform. Yeah. We need to get these entitlement programs for our kids and grandkids. We're actually now, there are a group of us working on actual specifics, having conservatives, liberals and moderates in the room mm. trying to agree. And I think we're making progress. What did you think of the announcement of Janet Yellen today for the Federal Reserve? Was that a distraction? Was it a step in the right direction? I mean, there's some out there who say this is a bad time because it just introduces another wild card and something else to fight about. I don't know. It could hey, be a good time because it makes the markets feel better. They know her. What do you think, good or bad? Hey, I think right now that's a, a minor distraction. No one in the Hill is that focused on that. We've got much bigger fish to fry. This whole debt and deficit issue, yeah. where the government is or where it's not, I think that's where your members of Congress are. You know, one thing I keep getting stuck on is this idea that every week, you know, the government takes in it's something like $234 billion in revenue, according to the CBO, in order to make payments on our debt. That's only $18 billion in order to pay our mortgage. Why can't we just keep doing that while this fight goes on? I mean, why do we have to not pay our mortgage, so to speak, if we don't have an agreement on the 17th? The problem we get into, at least when I've sat down with the CBO and Treasury officials at various functions and meetings, is you can't prioritize things. It sounds great, sounds logical, that's what you try to do at home, but the, the bills come in at different times, the revenue is uncertain. On an average, it can be X. That, that's one month so it's this, hard to accept month, and believe. I mean, I feel like we have so many great computer guys on Wall Street running quant funds. We can't send people there to organize. I mean, I know hey, it's four million payments a, a day. Of, I it, know, but you can send somebody there to work on that, to prioritize. I mean, all you have to do is look for the bond payments and pay those first. The computer systems we have, a lot of them, they're working on COBOL. When I was a kid, we did COBOL. It's not desktop here, Melissa. we got a long way to go. Okay. Congressman, you're very reasonable and you restore my faith. Thank you for coming on, at least. We appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. Up next on Money, how much is...